Hey, what's up everybody? This is Vito Lafada with the Fitness Pandora's Love and Rise of the Visionary. This is gonna be a special dual episode podcast because I got my main man, Scott Rockcliffe here from Social Media Marketing Muscle. Scotty, what's up? Yeah, I know, that was, that was my gunshot. I don't know why I do those, but it is what it is. Well, Yo. It depends who you're comparing it to. I mean, that is pretty big compared to some. That's correct. If I am comparing, <laughs> I can definitely think about um, some jokes that probably shouldn't have gone with there or whatnot. But hey, I've had the pleasure of having Scott out here for the last month almost or so yeah, pretty close. and whatnot as he's going, he's moving from Australia and heading over to Canada. We're hoping to get him to settle in the U.S. But this is his first time out here in the Temecula wine region and I've been taking him on an eight to ten vineyard tour as he's been getting to know this region and it, it's so funny how so many of the lessons and the conversations and the experiences that we've been having at all these vineyards directly relate to you and what's happening with your business because anywhere you look there's like gold lessons and things that you can mine for your success when you're vigilant and paying attention to them and we've been kind of like writing down some things that we're like man over the last four days in particular that we've been going over vineyards that we've been going like kind of two a days. You know how you guys get two workouts in a day? We kind of get two vineyards in a day. It's a holiday weekend, don't judge. It's training don't camp. Don't judge us, that's right, it's training camp. Yeah. It's wine camp, damn it. But we're getting ready for some big months to come ahead. So, Scott, you roll in, it's your first time, and you, were, you, you sat back and you're like, this is so perfect for, um, well, a lot of small business, but obviously you and I focus a lot with the fitness industry that you're like, this is exactly what it's like when people first walk into a fitness club. So share that story about how that first thing came about, and then we'll tie a lesson for okay. for the peeps listening in. So um, so I'm probably the opposite of a wine drinker uh, as Vito. He's converting um, though, he's converting. Yes. So. My first winery experience, so I've never drunk much wine. A lot of people close to me just weren't wine drinkers, like close to me as far as like uh, geography. So first time I ever went to a winery, like wine region, we went, we thought, okay, we're gonna go out, we're gonna go to a tasting, we're gonna have these people kind of show us because we have we literally have no idea. So we went into a winery and um, the guy just, you know, said, what kind of wines do you like? And we said, look, at, we, look, we have no idea. Like we're not very... We don't know wines. We're not drinkers, but we just want to try some. We're, we we like red, and he's like, red. <laughs> we're, like, we're like, yeah, red. He's like, what kind? And we're like, we don't know. And he rolled. He's just went, <sighs> rolled his eyes, walked away, came back, like just was very, like just talked down to us, like we were dumb, which we we were, but we were open. And then he was like, fine, we'll start with this. And he walked away. And I just looked at Christy and went, let's go. And we walked out. And we're like, yeah, wineries suck. These people are like terrible. That was the last winery I went into three years ago. Yep. Until so. till now. So kind of the, the interesting thing is like, so I bought probably 12 bottles of wine since I've been here. I don't think I bought 12 bottles of wine in my life. And it was just because I got a chance to, to understand like what the different wines were and why they were different and what you might like. And I was like, wow, okay, I actually, I enjoy the wine. I, I enjoy going to the tasting. I don't feel like an idiot. And I was saying like, like that's probably how there's a lot of people and, and sometimes it might be coming into your gym, but mm -hmm. even more so, the first experience someone's had in a gym. So imagine they went to like a, whatever whatever yeah. new experience yeah in the gym. yeah like a big box gym that everyone makes fun of whatever right they went in and had this bad experience because someone looked down on them or just was like oh you don't know how to do that they could have the exact same feelings as i had i was like well i'm not going to come back here like this is i feel awful i feel like an idiot so it, because we forget in particular the newbie experience like you were yeah. like a newbie to wine so if you, the salesman or pourer, or whatever the heck you had at that point, at that point you usually have the, the guy that's just pouring the wine, supposed to take you on a journey yeah. for the taste testing type thing. You had one that didn't know, you're a newbie. Oh. Completely different way to talk. Oh no, I let him know. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so even worse, yeah. you ignore what the person is telling you, bad business practice. But I took you to vineyards that I'm a member at, mm -hmm. 
So one, I know most of the people. So yeah. when you pulled up, they were just more like, let's educate you on it. And they talked to you about the wines, they educated you about the wines. So all of a sudden you're like, it's almost like information first marketing where you're like, I'm learning about this pr product. So now I understand why I can appreciate this product and it made all the difference in the world for you. And when they allowed me to experience it, mm -hmm. I bought it, right? It was like, oh, I do like this. Like you found what I was going to like and you gave me more of it so I could be like, wow, yes, I want this. And I left with some and, that, and, and, and like that's the lesson. It's so, it's the same. It's simple. It's the same. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But just very, um, just interesting because again, like we we're saying, like we get so wrapped up in it's the life that we live that we forget what it's like to be a newbie, to be brand new to an experience, yeah. and how much that can actually form your opinion or your relationship with that certain thing. Right, because that bad experience tainted you. If you didn't have a new, and somebody kind of pulling you along saying, come back in, come back in, you just had a shit experience. Yeah. It's not the industry, just probably like, you know, your customer could have had a bad experience with another gym, and you need to be thinking about that to being like, how do I overcome that barrier? How do I overcome that thought process in their head? Am I talking to them that way? Or am I just assuming, of course you wanna work out, of course you understand the benefits of fitness, of course you get why this place is great, as compared to, there's very few people that get that. You're dealing, the newbie market's the largest market. That's, I, I forget what the stat is, maybe, I don't even know if it's 20% of America has a gym membership. I think it's just under that. It's yeah, like 16% yeah, yeah. or something like that. So you're actually dealing a lot with the newbie market that think about their experience. Think about what you can do to help create a better member first experience or a better taste, you know, tasting experience, their trial in your place, and what you can extend from that from there. So let's build, okay, how do you well, And I was gonna say because you're gonna come in like, so for me, I was coming in with not so much a guard up because I was like, okay, you'll right, right, right. You'll probably slap them if they say anything wrong because you're that that passionate about wine. But it was also coming in and being like, it wouldn't take much if someone made me feel like an idiot again. Was like, you don't know what a cab salve is made out of. I'd been like, I'm done with it. Like, well, we can go now. I'm these yep wine people are idiots like it would have been easy for me to be like yeah i'm done and how different was it this and th this is something uh um why you got to look for your best people when you came when you came to certain vineyards and i'm like yo this dude knows his show this guy knows his craft like watch this like i took him to this one i took him to this place here down to del sol if you if you ever come out to temecula you gotta hit down to del sol and you go up to this dude named travis this dude is a craftsman at what he does. And it's why I take everybody there. Cause I'm like, watch this guy. He's, you know, when you go to a wine tasting, they'll give you like a little card that you're supposed to get four or five or six tasting, just depending upon the vineyard. And most places they'll cross off. You had a tasting, you had a tasting, you had a tasting. Travis, I just let him, I bring him up and I'm like, hey Travis, so this is Scott and uh, Christy and whatnot. And I'm like, they're new to here. And he's just like, okay, don't worry. Member cards go away and I'm gonna take you on a ride. And he just started asking them some questions. Anytime you can ask more questions, you can cater the experience to the person in front of you better. And he just took them on a ride. And I just kind of sat back to, the, to my detriment, which I'll tell you about in a second, because <laughs> this douche here goes and screws my loyalty up. But, how different was that when you had somebody that made an experience for you as well? So you got education, which is awesome in your marketing. You gotta do that. But then you add experience on top of it. Now you got juice. And tying it into what I was enjoying, like what I was yeah. liking and asking like, you know, did you like that? Do you like that more than this one? That sort of thing. And so the end result was uh, walking out with four bottles of wine instead of one or none. But at some place I didn't buy any. So... I mean, that's it because he tailored it to be like, let me make sure I get him to taste the things that I think he's really going to like. Because mm -hmm. there's a greater chance of me being like, wow, that was good and that was good and that was good. All right, I'll take them all. And, you know, something to pick up on that because you could like a salesman can try. Like we do this a little bit in the fitness industry where we try to we try to push the person to something that we want them to take. Yep. As compared to they quit. If you said I don't like it, it was just abandon it, move to the next thing. Because 
Why try to sell you on something you don't like or you're not interested in or you're gonna argue over or anything like that as compared to, I'll just keep pushing you and catering more to what you like. So I'll bundle together the things that make you happy, that you want, that you desire. Yep. That's such a different form of, of selling that will increase. So you went from, I remember you telling me like, oh, I'm gonna get that one bottle. To all of a sudden you're like, you walked out with four and you were awesome and you bought me my freaking three or whatnot. So you were <laughs> awesome about that. Um, which, how smart was freaking Travis yeah. in that? There was a memorial, Memorial Day? Yeah, yeah, Memorial Day sale going on. And there was a discount going on if you were veteran and all this and that. But Travis, who, who knows me and he knows I spent thousands of dollars there. He was just like, hey, you brought in a buddy and whatnot. He's just like, this is cool. I'm going to give you the same discount that we're giving to the Memorial Day. And that change of another 10% discount helped us just add two or three more bottles on that you got to know when to break the rules for the right members, for the right customers, your VIP people that you need to be taking care of because we were at another vineyard and the what? VIP experience we was more than different. One? We went to the, <laughs> yeah. And this was this was this one was all just no this was broken up in two days, Which that one was broke because we went uh, we went to Donza, I think Saturday Sunday and then we hit Renzoni because so my birthday passed and Renzoni sends me a birthday card which is awesome and you get a fifty percent off discount and off a bottle yeah the thing is is like as you were saying that was the only because you're a wine member to. A number of places and it was the only one that sent you something for your birthday correct but so and not even just direct mail they're the only person that sent anything like not even email right correct yeah correct so it's so up. you got to think about that for your brand and your marketing like i belong to uh, roughly eight nine ten freaking memberships out here i have a problem i have a problem it's legit but it's clean people and of the eight or nine one place for my birthday sent me a birthday card that said, come on in and you get a 50% discount on a bottle. I was like, that's cool. No emails from any of the other, nothing like that. So I had that and I went in with that and it wasn't during my birthday month or what, actually it was, yeah. but it was way later. So none of those weird stipulations, like you gotta use it in your birthday month. Don't put weird conditions and stuff on like that, that just create a reason to not make a sale in your VIP stuff for your members. but. Because you like going in there, you're like we're talking about it going in, being like how cool, like right. wow, that's crazy. They were the only person that even tried to like even wish you a happy birthday or give you something, yeah. and you're like it became well, a talking point between us. So uh, it's like those kind of things engineer conversations amongst your members and your prospects that you're always looking to find a way to put yourself in a conversation that people are having about your business because then. You talking about that to me, I was like, wow, okay, this is the only place that did that. Like, instantly, not knowing the difference between any of the wineries, I was like, okay, this place, would, this must be a good place. Like, this yep. is like, I'm like, all right, it's almost like, I'm like, they're good. Like, they did the right thing. I, yep. You already have me one step closer. To right, you already have, me. that's right. And we go in, and we're doing our wine tasting and whatnot, and I settle on, like, uh, one of the wines I want. And it's on the library menu, which is a little bit more of the expensive side. It's a little bit more of the exclusive side and whatnot. And she goes, oh, but the, the discount is only on wines on this side of the menu. And I'm like, what do you mean? And she kind of just like the small print here. It's only for the regular release. I can't remember exactly what it was called and whatnot. And I'm like, why are you putting a barrier in the way of the sale? I'm a VIP member. I spend a lot of money here. I frequent this place. I bring guests here. You, as the salesperson, need to be empowered to know when again to make the exceptions. And she's like, I would, but they have bureaucracy in place. And I'm like, come on. This isn't that big enough of a freaking place that whoever that is, you need to go back to your region, your, your director, or whoever owns this place and say, you know what, we need to be empowered to make good buying decisions like that. I should say good sales decisions like that. Because now you've got two guys that were like, this was a cool card. Now being like, oh, but now you just put a hurdle in the way. As compared to look for everything you do to grease the shoots of the sale. 
And you were just like, eh. At the end, I think you were just like, eh, just give me, just throw another one of those bottles that you threw into my thing. Like, you were just like, eh. Yeah, I, didn't I, I actually ended up using that discount on, like, one of the other bottles. And it was only, like, a 20-some-odd dollar bottle of wine. So you're, like, Sweet. On a wine that you're just like, eh, yeah, I know that one. Like, I'm not going to. Right. You know, whereas you, if you got that right. discount, you might have tried something a lot more expensive or, or different. You're like, ooh, I like you're, this, you're, right? Yeah. 100%. So, like, just in, in, in thinking about for your business, one, treat your VIPs different. Make sure you're reaching out to them and sending direct mail or emails for birthdays and occasions. Because part of marketing is just always looking for a reason to communicate. A birthday is a reason to communicate mm -hmm. and create a conversation and give them a bonus to come in because if they come in, they're going to usually spend more, buy something else. You can engineer that sale. But if you're not looking for those opportunities, you're just missing all the little moments of the year that you can be increasing your revenue by just being thoughtful about what you throw into your marketing, but make it easy for people. And then one of the things we were saying, like how it went from this really cool thing to almost it, worse than not sending anything at all because now you had a bad, bad you experience. Like, you bad kind experience. of just like tricked yeah. me, right? As opposed to like walking in, it was like, wow, you guys did it. You guys looking out for me way more than the rest of the ones I'm, I'm a member at. Leaving, you're like, wow, you guys just tried to screw me over. You're not as yeah. good as the other ones now. And, and like, we, you know, you and I debated, we, we debated the idea between should we, is it, is it better to have done nothing? Or is it better to have done that and screw it up a little bit? Yeah. I still believe it's better to have done something and screw it up a little bit because then we can give them feedback and then they can fix it. And like that was something that, um, you know, Scott and I being <laughs> business and marketing nerds, we have no problem breaking a business down and be like, so Sabina, so you know what you should do? this is what you should be doing here and whatnot. And she's like, I know, I know she's Italian. She totally got into all of it. But where were we at with, um, we were at Fazelli, and we were telling that the the girl because like oh, yeah. so, sometimes we go you can go to, so example uh, a lot of the memberships I have I go to certain ones because there's a personality at each one Travis at Donza Art and Michael at Vindemia uh, Sabina at Robert Renzoni Howard at yeah. Gershon Backus so we know the best pourers that you've now built a relationship and rapport with, which is obviously valuable for your business. So you guys always should be looking out for your, your superstars in your business that, that create that and figure out what you can do with them. But I'm always like, all right, so Fazelli has great wines. They don't have a good server, but we're gonna go in because of the wines. But we end up getting one that was actually, she's new. Yeah. And she just had personality. And she was just having fun with us and whatnot. And we took the time to let her know, we're like, keep doing what you're doing. You're the first person here at this vineyard that has injected some fun, some personality, took us off menu and started making suggestions about stuff. And out of a lot, like, so, I mean, not that I can remember all the people that kind of helped us out, but out of anyone that kind of helped us and had more than just a, here's what you're drinking, that's it. Like she, it felt like she knew like the least about the wines on the menu in her place, and she totally owned it and was like honest with it, but which was great, right? Because we're like, because it's just it's that experience, right? You like you She's not trying to like it was act personality, like it was. Yeah, totally is sometimes more important than just let me educate you with everything I know and belittle you to try to show you how smart I am. That can hinder a sale as well. Because she was like, especially with you, that you're like, I'm not trying to be like, do I need to know the tenons and the nose and the, you're like, do I freaking like it? Actually, it's funny you say it. So the tannin thing, that was the thing that, that we left in the other place, that first wine we went to. Because when he came back and we said wines, he was like, you know. Well, what tannin well, level? Yeah, well, yeah he said that. And we're like, I'm like, I don't, I'm like, to be honest, I don't even know what tannins are. And that's when he and he rolled his eyes. That's when he uh, like literally rolled his eyes and walked away. And we're like, we're out. Yeah, I knew mm -hmm. I remember that. Um, but yeah, like she was like, she's like, oh, I think you asked about a wine. She's like, I don't know. She's like, I've never actually. She's like, I haven't tried that one yet. I'm um, just like, but I hear it's good. But that's I haven't right. tried it. That's right. Where she could have just that's like totally pandemonium. been just full of shit and been like, oh yes, yeah, it's like, oh yes, it's fantastic. It's smooth, bacony smoke on your throat, like just something <laughs> you know that. 
you'd think someone would say. <laughs> but meanwhile, then she took us off on that wine that was off the off the list and whatnot, and took us the back to that bought. one, not the ones that we bought. Yeah, the ones that we bought. <laughs> um, just sometimes listen, you got to listen. You got exactly just listening there. But right. so a couple other things that we thought about. Ooh, what can you do in your business to extend benefits to guests? Mm. So example. When Scott and uh, others came to the venue with me, when I bring guests, they're allowed to get my VIP discount on their bottles. So the reason Scott bought a case is because he's just like, well, number one, he's getting really good wines, he's having experience and he's doing the cool thing there and his wine addiction is quickly growing. (laughs) But I'm also like, hey dude, you're here and you get my 20% discount on anything you buy. He doesn't have to be a member, but because he's a guest of a member, they extend the benefit to the guest. That's something key to be thinking about when your people are bringing in guests to your business, what way can you extend the discount, the offer, the special, the whatever you have to that person to just add that one more awesome experience, that one more added benefit, and your member feels great that they were able to do that. So there's a reciprocity involved. Yeah, because you're ex- you're sharing your passion, your love for that winery or wines mm-hmm. or whatever. But also, like, and I don't really think we mentioned it, just when you're saying that, I was like, well, I mean, I don't have, I didn't have a massive appreciation for wine. So to go, to go to all these places and spend, you know, $20, $25 per wine tasting, when I don't, I'm like, I don't even know if I like this. Like, I'm gonna go drop, like, seven. Right, bucks they're a almost day. putting a prohibitive mm-hmm. cost to you wanting to explore more until you find the right things for you. Yep. But because a guest is taking you on a trek, you got to be like, sweet. No I got cost. to go in and be like, you know what? Worst case scenario, I try some wine, I don't like, I spit it out, and it's the only thing I've like lost was. A little bit of time, but I'm with people that I like, so it doesn't really matter. Whereas oh, it might have stopped me to be like, that you like giving them money. It's like okay, this I could spend twenty bucks or twenty five bucks. It's not a lot, but it's still just it's what just whatever people value. Yeah, right? but I mean, but if, I'm, you, if you if you add that up away. during the day, yeah, like I mean, because we went to two or three, you're looking at forty five, fifty, sixty bucks right there, yeah. and to for something I don't even know if I'm gonna like exactly, yeah. exactly. So the thing being like. Maybe your, your, your guest brought in somebody. Most people are doing a free pass, but sometimes they go to add on that guest fee of 20 bucks or whatnot. I'm like, wave that shit. Just let the person have the experience and tell them, you know what? We actually have a special because you're here for the first time and whatnot and have that like go-to special that you can extend to a guest that a valued member brought because if you're doing a good job, because your member's going to bring more people in, like you bring well, that's more one. people in. That's one. So yeah. you got them bringing more people in. Two, if you know your lifetime value, you don't care about the first month sale. No. You care more about like I know this person at least stays with us for a year. That means you're like at a hundred bucks a month. Let's just pick a, uh, an easy number. That's twelve hundred bucks a year. Do you care that you gave them a 30% discount on month one or a 50% discount on month one? If you do, you suck at your business and sales. But even if you gave them, even if you gave them the first month for nothing, and it's twelve hundred dollars. That's not even like ten, it's like eight percent. You gave them an eight percent discount. Like it's if you go to a shop and someone's like, Oh yeah, this TV, eight percent off. You're like, so? <laughs> like it's like right. whatever, right? right? So sometimes you gotta like Think of like how do we react around those things and be like, oh, is it really a big deal? Because like, right, I can't give a month away for nothing. I do group classes; it costs me absolutely nothing to add this extra person. And you're like, it's, yeah, but a TV's eight percent off and doesn't excite you. No, it's the same thing, right? That's right. But also in, in kind of saying that, like you give them that one little workout too. It's like giving me one taste of a wine. It's like, all right, so what would you like to buy now? I'm like, eh, I don't know. I'm good. Yep. So I'm like, eh, that was okay. I don't know. So now it's like, I might not have had a chance to, you know, experience enough that I'm willing to kind of invest in. So it's, it's that thing because you know that you, they know when we leave, you're still going to talk about that place with me. That's so right. you're going to be selling me on it. Same thing when people come into your fitness business, like the, the, that friend's going to be like, Hey, I want like, 
I want you to come back. Like Vito doesn't have enough people that will go to wineries with him. So he's like, I want, like, I need to make this good for you because I want you to come back. Same thing, like, not everyone loves fitness. So like, oh, like okay, hold on. Oh, oh, so oh, you need to come back with me because I need a friend at this gym. Yeah. So let let's let's take the lesson of Christy. Yes. Your girlfriend. Yeah. So Christy. So I think she'd only had a bottle of wine the last time you guys were with me the, three years ago. The last time she had a glass of wine. A glass yes. of wine was with me. I'm obviously a bad influence on a lot of things, people, or a good influence, depending on which way you look at it. But <laughs> when you guys were coming out, she was vehement to you, well, like, I'm not going to be drinking wine. I'm not blah, blah, blah. Like, you could tell that. Our, like clients, so we, we shut down our, our personal training business and we're telling where we're going first, you know, before we go out to Canada. And um, we're saying like, you know, it's a wine region. They're like, ooh, like you're gonna drink wine? Chris like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not having any. They're like, you gotta try some. Nope, I'm not having any sugar voluntarily. And I will not have any. They're like you will, she's like, I will not. Like she was like, I'm drawing a line in the sand. It is not happening. Did you get her? Oh, we got her into some wines. We got her enjoying Sangiovese, Pinot Grigio. Uh, a couple of random ones. A couple of random ones. One up, but Sangiovese is definitely her grape. We discovered yeah. that. But when we, when I was at, like, well, I think Scott brought up, oh, you were going to drink some wines. And she was honestly, she was like, it wasn't the wines. She's just like, Vito sold me on the wines because he had so much energy and passion and conviction for taking people on the experience that he sat down and told me about the wines and told me stories about them and whatnot that she enjoyed being with somebody that's passionate about it. Sometimes that's the, that's the um, what's the word I'm looking for? It's the um, intangible. Mm. It doesn't it, exactly. It doesn't show up as on the checklist, but it should show up on your checklist for more revenue, more sales, and a growth of your business. Is passion, energy, and conviction showing up in you, your team, your staff, your people? Because that sells more than any marketing bullet point. Yeah, because like the best, the best program on the earth is not is not going to help people as much as the best coach on the earth. Like the, the person that just like cares, like you just, it's, you're just so passionate about that thing. Yep. You're gonna get more people to, you know, get involved with it than just being like, again, talking about the tenants and the percentage. <laughs> exactly. Do you know how and I don't know, I don't know that stuff as well. I just know like the basic stuff, but I'm passionate enough about it. And what is always the best about wine is, Look, you and I are, are shooting a podcast about our experiences because we're just like there were stories, there was yeah. funny stuff. There's a remember when we we met this this couple um, that actually like the woman stopped. We were at breakfast and the woman's just like, "Oh, I gotta follow your wife, Anna." Well, she actually did this to Anna yeah. and whatnot. I was like, she I'm, did not talk to you, right? I'm, in, I'm <laughs> inserting myself as if that was what it was, but so point being also. Anna got noticed somewhere to, for what she's doing because she's constantly putting video out, constantly putting herself out there. So if you want to grow your fans and your followers in obscure places of the world, get out there more. But totally. uh, we met them and they were talking to us about, oh, well, we just did this other vineyard and whatnot. And they came in and they're like, but you know what? The sale was so convoluted. They started to introduce us to wines, but then they're like, well, that wine is only on special three months of the year and you can only get it if you're a member over here. And then this wine you only get if you're part of this and it's only on sale during these months and whatnot. And I'm like, let me guess that you guys went to Weens. And they're like, yeah, how'd you know? And I'm like, because they have the most jacked up sales process in the world. Because when I was there, a complete wino, with my credit card out, trying to be like, I'm going to join your membership. <laughs> they started jacking the sale up in so many ways that I'm like, I am trying to give you money. And you are effing the sales up because you're making all these parameters happen that is confusing me. And a confused mind makes no decision. 
So you got to look at your sales process and be like, am I making it simple? Am I making it step by step? Am I making it easy for people to get in? Because the minute you confuse them or you convolute them, you're going to lose the sale just because you didn't think about, am I making it simple? And also think about... And then the people talking about it. But also, like, what are you offering them too? Because like they had certain things, they have have these different things to offer. It'd be like, okay, well, we have 30-minute sessions, we have 45-minute sessions, we have hour-long sessions, we have small group, we have medium group, we have large group, we have one-on-one, we Mm -hmm, have mm -hmm. um, over 50s. Um, but if you're over 50, you can only do a 30 minute um, one on one or a medium group session um, in this. Membership right. And you create the so like and they're I'm, like, I'm huh? dealing I'm dealing with a client right now that it is exactly I'm like, I'm like, you're making your memberships like you can't do the clinics in this. You can do the clinics if you're here, but not do that one and not do these. Not the Friday night ones, not this. And I'm like, I'm like, you're making it just I, I'm like, I can't I, I can't follow your memberships. No. And I'm trying to help your marketing right now. And I'm like, I can't follow your damn memberships. Just make them like, this one is basic. It only comes with this. This one comes with these two things. That's why the car wash is great. Choose your options. Well, it's bullet points of what comes with what. Or you look at someone like a like good friend of ours, um, Frank Gallagher. Like, mm-hmm. He's like 30 minutes. That's, That's your, we, because we feel we're so passionate that it only takes 30 minutes to get the results you're looking at. Looking yep. at. And it's basically like 30 minutes. How many times do you want to come in a week? And that's your option. And then it makes sense because now you're not like, because for someone that doesn't understand, like it's like, well, not only do I have to figure out what size group I have to be in, but what time, like is 30 minutes good for me or an hour? And then you start thinking about it, it's like, well, if I have like a goal, what it can take 30 or 45 minutes or 60, like how can that, how can that be? Like mm-hmm. it takes four years to get a, a university degree. You can't be like, oh, actually, I would like to do... Correct, uh, correct. I'd like to do it in... It's not uh, about the modality. Totally. At all. But it's I think about we just, the end result. But it's because you're like, holy cow, like we just got to... We have to offer something for everybody. Mm-hmm. So we can cater to everybody. Mm-hmm. But I mean... But that's also... I mean, that's why everything's becoming commoditized and why our industry's struggling. And like, so um, we'll, we'll, we'll bring this home with disruptive business. So we're, with that, that couple that we were talking about that was telling us about their jacked up sales at that one place and whatnot, best thing ever is uh, <laughs> she works, well, the, the lady works for, uh, for DC Comics. If you follow me long enough, you know I have a Batman issue. So like if you've ever seen, um, is, it the, is it the Clumps? Hercules, Look. Hercules. What's oh yeah, yeah, that's yeah. uh that's uh so pretty much like Vito Nutty is professor. Vito is like oh, DC, like imagine like that Hercules, Hercules, but Vito like DC, DC. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, pretty dude, much what like, happened. That's not stuff we talk about on the podcast. Oh, I want stuff. them to have that visual view. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Anyway, so I've got Scott with me who's never being allowed to come back out here with us again, but I find out Shannon works for DC Comics. So right there, I'm like, what? And this and that. We start having this awesome conversation about where are they going? So here you have DC Comics. Been around for a freaking A. Jesus, how long? 60, 70, 50, 60 years? Did she say say some of the 20s or that was just comic books? Well, that's when comic books started or whatnot. But so what was interesting about it is you're, you're talking about Uh, She's like, the big conversation that they're having in their industry, and always remember, don't think I can't learn something from another industry, because the comic book industry is going through what we're going through, because they're like, media is changing. The young millennials, they don't want the comic book. They want on their iPad, but our generation still likes the physical thing, and they're like, but... We have to respect the chain of comic book shops or where the community is built for the user. But they're like, millennials aren't doing it as much as you weird comic book guys used to and whatnot. That they're like, how do we still connect the comic book shop to now the ones that want online and digital, which is happening in the fitness industry? Be- because what she was saying was they they realized that, that a certain part of the the 
comic book culture is the community. Mm-hmm. And if if it's just you just do digital stuff where they there's nothing like they don't think about how do they bring these people together, then it'll it'll crumble because Correct. it's you, you're not able to like share that path. Correct. And that's the, that's a big myth that a lot of people don't do just don't because like you know I'm always out there saying build your online business. That's where I hang my hat on, but. I'm not saying stop an offline business. I'm just saying the offline can be pictured in a different way. Like Anna doesn't train people physically anymore, but she puts on retreats and workshops. I don't have a a shop anymore, but I still do workshops. I have people come in here. I still have to always do the live physical element, mastermind event, retreat type stuff. And I think that's something that people, when they think about it online, they'll think I'm going to just sit like, in a cabin somewhere and never talk to anybody or never do anything or whatnot. Not that that sounds bad to me, but nonetheless, that's not the reality about online. But the point being like, you have to look at the disruptive pattern of what's going on and look to the horizon, look to three years, look to five years out and ask yourself, is what you're producing now going to be relevant in five years if it's not, and you're not starting to create the new skills, the new competencies, the new outputs, the new ways of doing business, you won't be relevant in five years. And then all of a sudden you're going to watch, like, um, who are we talk? Uh, her her husband, yep. who works for DirecTV and AT&T, they're all one and the same now. But he's just like, we're in an industry where we're like, we're seeing numbers decline as Netflix, Hulu, and all those guys are coming up with customization, but we're so entrenched and we still make so much money that we bury our he- head in the sand over it. Well, and they, they, it's the kind of the, the good thing, bad, like kind of the, the good thing, bad thing is like, you know, like a Disney has such brand awareness that like they can, they can just kind of, they have brand loyalty and awareness so they can, they can take that disruptive and be like, we're going to yank all our content off everybody else. We're going to make a Disney channel and people will pay because Disney is a brand. AT&T, DirecTV, nobody has loyalty to it. Nobody has loyalty to it. But he was even saying like Disney is slower to the, the game with that because they're not, it's not affecting them as much, but it's kind of that thing where if, you know, like, well, like Blockbuster, they waited too long. Yeah. Right. Where if they just were like, we see this coming, if we make a change, like they could have been, mm-hmm. you know. So it's mm-hmm. that thing of, you know, you do have that brand build up, but if you if you just ignore it for so long, like it is going oh, to. Oh, the laggards, the fucking laggards. We were talking about. So we were talking with them, and they, like you know, there's a bell curve of the change of technology, or well anything new that's coming in. It's like the early adopters that got in on the iPhone to then, uh, what, what do you call the ones right after the early adopters? The laggards are the ones that are so late to the party that at that point it's too late. You're, 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 you're paying the worst price, the worst thing and whatnot. But it, we couldn't remember it. it was laggards and I it, keep forgetting the middle one. It's people that are like, I think I'm gonna start doing Facebook ads right now. Right, right. <laughs> Right, right. So the point being is that you guys got to be thinking about the disruptive nature of what technology and behavior and experience is doing that big ass industries like DirecTV, uh, DC Comics, if they're thinking this way, Disney, like we're just saying there, if they're thinking this way, we have to be thinking this way. And it's something I've been talking about for years. I'm like, you got to start looking at hybrid businesses. You got to evolve. If you're not evolutionary, you're extinct in the next five. And it's funny because there's like people sometimes say like, well, I don't have the, I don't have the, but like Disney's so big, they can do so much. But that's also a good thing because you're so small. Correct. You can make changes in a hurry. You're nimble. You can change you're like nimble, that, yeah. right? So you can shift everything or you can shift a large percentage of your stuff online if you want to. Where it's going to take Disney a fair bit of time to shift there because they have to do so many changes. So I think sometimes we see that as a negative, but it's really is it is a positive too if you if you you know jump on that. And, and is, isn't that what we talked to um, to Eric about? Because we're like, what can Direct TV do? Mm. Is go simplification and customization. Yeah. Because I'm like, 
who I, I don't want a, I don't want a hundred and fifty dollar not nine dollar a package and three quarters of the shit I don't use. Let make it easy. Let me scroll down and be like HBO, Showtime, this, that, and just tell me what the a la carte price is. Mm -hmm. And I'll create and then it tallies it up and it's ninety nine ninety nine a month. That's my monthly membership. And you're probably more likely to stay with that because I, I don't know about you, but I, I mean, I've belonged to things before with like membership sites or, or monthly things where there's so much stuff in there that I never get through the majority of it. And even though more than half of it I never need to look at, I just feel like, wow, I'm paying for all this and I'm only using this much. Yeah. And I've canceled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of that same thing where it's like, even from a, a stickiness standpoint, yeah. like, Having all member this retention, stuff. but do you know what can help with that? As far as because you and I, we, yeah. we build courses for people, and we have that kind of stuff. Um, a fast track guide type thing, like yeah. hey, depending on you, this is the fast track, and a big picture overview of like almost like tracks. Are you trying to do this? We recommend over here. Like we've had to go retool in the visionary planner, like. It's so much. We're like, oh, uh, we got we to make little fast tracks. We got to figure out shit. Otherwise, everyone's going to cancel on the backside of that. And what outside of if you're in a coaching mastermind style event. Yep. But if you're building your membership site, I mean, we're having this discussion with Anna today because she's like uh, week six of her high performance coaching. And since we turned into a membership model, somebody's just like, I, I want to cancel because I'm on. It's like information overload. I have too much and whatnot. And you're like, but that's not our problem, that's the user problem, but what do we have to do about that? We do need to figure out a way to, how do I coach that, how do I speak to that? Otherwise you just have people canceling left and right. And now with how many memberships people have, how much continuity they have, they'll start, they'll list them out. Yep. And they'll list them out and be like, like Mike and I do this monthly where we look at the subscriptions that we have for our business, we're like, uh, we're not using RevStream that much anymore. Cancel it. Uh, we're, we're always using Canva. We're always, okay, that stays on. That stays on. That you have the list of your running subscriptions. You don't want to be on that subscription list that gets canceled. Because it's almost like before there used to be, what's, I think it's still the same way, but it's shifting. Before it was like, the more they got, like they, people want to see all this value or like there's so much stuff in there. And now it's but, too much. But now it's just like, Whoa. like people will pay and be like, you know what? If you can condense those hundred things into just two five minute videos and it gives me the same result, yes please, I'll buy it. I'll buy this and I'll pay this. That's same. because, yeah, uh, it's time. My, Mike, my, well you know Mike, my yeah. partner in VP. Um, he's, what, what he's really good at is a minimum dose of effectiveness to get mm -hmm. the desired end result. That's it. Yeah. I mean, both of us can be verbose and want to add too much because you want to add so much value. But the consumer is dealing with overwhelm, information overload, and their own inability to, to differentiate between busyness and like well, the real life work that they're trying to do. Busy is always going to be there. We can't keep using that as an excuse. I see this all the time with, with our consulting clients and people we, we run marketing to. It's like, you don't need to add anything else to it. Like don't, we don't have to add a, a, new, a new component to the funnel or a new offer or whatever. You know what we should add to it? Call, follow up with them just a little bit more. If we like, just do a better job of the things that are already in place and everything's gonna get better as opposed to like, I think we need to add a retargeting thing here and, and then, you know, this right. here and this here. It's like, what? And, and you, especially when they don't have to have a good converting offer. Do you contact people every day right. when they come in? I remember no? when you shared your um, your little 14-day, uh, do you give that away as a lead magnet? No, just clients. Shit, that's a good lead magnet though for you because that's, that's, that's fucking goddamn, val oops, sorry. It's really <laughs> valuable. Um, that... I just remember being like, I'm like, th that's it. You can 10X your sales without spending a dime on marketing with that one page sheet. Yeah. The problem is, is you have to create a culture and a team that executes on it or have some, cause like, you know, some of it had email automation, yep. some of it had text automation, but the one you're like, I can't get, I'm not gonna start robo dialing. 
I got to get one of your staff or the little like where you're like, have them shoot a video, send in the person thing. But in a small local business, that's enough to change your numbers. In a big Tremont info marketing business, that's not going to work. But in a local brick and mortar business, just sending that kind of stuff is huge. But even even in a lot of online businesses, if you just had a better follow up sequence. Oh yeah yeah yeah. But uh, correct, yeah, correct. Yeah. I mean, there's no way to be like, hey oh, Sally, yeah. I saw that you got my free gift online and whatnot. But do you know where that does work? In high, if you're doing though. Um, high-end coaching, high-end consulting, like you and I work with private clients. So if I got somebody into my funnel with that and I did want to send, hey, Gonzalo, just wanted to follow, oh, speaking of, glad I just thought about that. Hey, Gonzalo, you got to freaking get back with me. I'm giving you 24 hours before I'm going to free up the dates. Yep. That stuff goes a long way and whatnot, but that's some good stuff. Mm. That's some good stuff. All because of wine, Temecula, good people, but more importantly, it's just like, these are fun conversations. These are the kind of conversations we geek out on, we nerd out on, that this year, give yourself the gift of geeking out, nerding out on your business and your marketing and being vigilant. When you're in your own uh, experiences, you're on your own vacations, you're out with friends, you're, you're shopping at places and whatnot, Watch how these stores and these businesses, especially the ones that you're like, I love that place. What do they do well? Like we took those notes down on our iPhone, like at the vineyard and whatnot. It took me 10 versions to copying of writing it because I had wine fingers, but it still got down. When I was in Italy at Boji and I, had, and I met Daniele, who I went in for a jacket. I walked out with $1,500 worth of clothes because the motherfucker <laughs> is just like, you know what he did? I wrote about this in my newsletter, so make sure you get this month's issue of, uh, of the newsletter that's coming out. But I'm just like, all he did was ask questions. He's like, what is this for? And I'm like, uh, you know, I present on stage. I, have to ha I want to have different things. He's just like, well, what kind of presenting? What, where are the places? Is it in it? And he just started asking questions, and he just starts making matches of everything. And I'm like, son of a bitch. The power of the upsell based on questions and helping create the right experience for your people. If you took nothing from our little wine session that I refilled twice, Scott did not refill at all. Well, that's because based on my new wine knowledge, I realized that we started out too strong with the Cab Sav. The first one was right, the Cab Sav. So. It, it's, it was six o'clock. It we, wasn't like day drinking at two o'clock. That's, that's what my you, mentor told me. Oh, Never wow. start with the cap sav, he said. Anyway, my friends, <laughs> we are going to continue this conversation off camera. Hope you enjoyed this special, just conversational Fitness Panora's Life and Rise of the Visionary podcast. Scott, thanks so much. Hey, if they want to find out a little bit about what you're doing with your uh, social media marketing and your consulting companies, and whatnot, where, can they can, where can they find you a little bit? Just go on social media right now, like go on Facebook or Instagram, uh, kind of going through a little bit of revamp. We have something really exciting going on for, you know, coming out for online or well, for local business to, to really kind of develop the lead gen. So we have both of our sites being revamped. So just go Scott Rockliffe on Facebook or Instagram. Hit me up there. And I mean, yeah, if they want the... I got tons of resources. So when people actually hit me up and ask, they get them. That's Most it. people don't. So. Oh, the big ask. That was the only thing we forgot to talk about. We'll leave that for another episode. Just know, if you go for a big ask and you develop the relationship, because that's how him and I got to know each other and how we've built and added a lot of opportunity, income, and great people into our lives because you just simply ask for the things that you want in life. As long as you're adding value back, that reciprocity is gonna come around. So go add value, go for the big ask, Go freaking geek out and nerd out in your business. We hope to see you guys keep on growing out there. This is Vito and Scott saying peace.